What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This week we have a jam-packed episode with a ton of value. We're talking everything you need to know about nodes in DaVinci Resolve. So this is gonna be full of knowledge to help you get started, no matter if you're an editor or a director or you wanna build a career in color grading. Before you say, hey, this doesn't apply to me, hear me out because I believe color grading is one of the easiest ways to set yourself apart. Nowadays, anybody can pick up a camera with some log settings and call themselves a filmmaker, but making your movies appear big budget and professional will set you aside from the competition. Color grading is one more tool in your pocket that you have to offer on your next job. And with that, let's roll the intro. Right before we get started though, if you're new here, welcome. New videos are coming out weekly on Mondays and Wednesdays. We cover filmmaking tutorials, product reviews, and so much more. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a ton. And be sure to ring that bell as well so that you don't miss any new videos. So let's jump into Resolve. All right, so here we are in the color page of Resolve. Also, quick heads up, but this is a topic I'm gonna to be building out over the next few weeks, so make sure you're subscribed and coming back for that. There's so much to cover, and one video is only scratching the surface, and I wanna give you guys all of the knowledge you need to succeed. Okay, so here we have a clip. For this example, I just loaded in this one. It was shot on red raw format. Right now, I don't have anything built out here in the node tree, but in this area right here to the right of the monitor is where all of your nodes are gonna be. You have an input and an output and everything in between is what's used to create your grade. Now, the most basic node and the one all clips start out with is a simple serial node. It's the first one, so it's labeled 01. And if I either right click on the node or go to add node, and select serial, you'll see it added one after. And this is how we start to build out our node tree. You can also label nodes, which I highly recommend you get in the habit of doing. I have a key bound to F1 right now, but you can also right click and say node label and then type in what you want. Now, if you come from Premiere Pro or Final Cut or any of the other programs, don't let this interface scare you away. In Premiere, you have all of your tracks and you can go in and apply an instance of Lumetri Color, for example, and either do it over top of the video clip in an adjustment layer or add multiple instances of Lumetri to your clip. In Resolve, it's much easier since it shows you which clip you're on to grade and every function can be split up into separate nodes that make one whole. The Resolve system just makes much more sense to me and it's much more intuitive. Back to nodes though, let's say your white balance is in node one, then you can hit Alt S to add a serial node and make your next one contrast, for example. I'll cover building out your node tree in a different upcoming video, but you want to make sure that you aren't doing a bunch of functions in one node, just in case you need to go back and fix something or tweak your image later. All right, next one I wanna show you is a parallel mixer node. So if I hit Alt S here first to create a new node and then Alt P here, it'll add a parallel node and this little icon here showing you it's a parallel layer mixer. In Resolve, the green indicators are your RGB inputs and outputs, so the signal comes in from the left and outputs on the right towards your final output. Looking at the parallel layer mixer, it's taking your two layers and merging them together to form one output signal that takes your parallel nodes and combines the output. Now conversely, I can also add another serial node here and then add a layer mixer node. This is very similar to the parallel mixer, but instead of taking all of your changes and blending the output, it isolates lower layers and says whatever I do in my first node affect everything but the selection I've made below. So practically, what does that mean? Well, let's go back to the parallel mixer and in the first node, for the sake of example only, let's give the image some saturation and then push some blue into the shadows. This is going to be over exaggerated, obviously, to show you the difference here. Let's go to the bottom layer now and push some red into the image. Now, if you look, even on Parade, we're affecting the whole image. All of the colors are shifting back and forth. Okay, so let's reset these and go to the layer mixer instead. Let's say I want to do the same thing to create a look here, but I don't want it affecting the skin tones or the red part of the image. What I can do is I can go to the top layer and start creating my look push some blue into the image here again. 
But if I go to the next node, you can see it prioritized the bottom layer, which I haven't changed. So the image still shows up like there were no changes. Now, if I go to the bottom layer of this layer mixer and instead qualify my reds by just going to color, presets, and then six vector red. Let's also improve our key slightly here, just for example's sake. Uh, that's good enough, but for now. And then go to the next node. You can see the blues are still pushed into the rest of the image, but the layer mixer separated out our reds and they weren't affected by the first node, so we still have color separation. Super useful tool with layer mixer. I've used this a lot with qualifiers and to preserve skin tones in certain instances, and I love how it works. Okay, last one I wanna cover here to get you started is an outside node. So let's make this node here that we're on now a vignette so what i'll do is i'll go to the power window and add a circle power window expand it out to the shape that i want and then let's give it some feather so we don't have a harsh transition line okay invert to affect the outside parts of the image and now i'm going to go to my curves and kind of grab a point here and pull down some so if we get rid of the window you can see if we turn this on and off, we affected the image quite a bit. Now, let's say I want to affect the inside of my power window. Remember, when we inverted it, I affected the outsides of the image. So now let's say I want to brighten up our dude here. I'll go Alt-O here, and it creates an outside node. If you look, it's different from the other nodes because it has a connecting blue indicator here. None of our other nodes have done that. This is another way Resolve is super powerful. Just like we had RGB in and out with the green indicators, here we have key in and key out. So for an outside node, we're passing our key information from our node with our vignette here over to the outside node and Resolve is inverting it to give you the exact opposite of your key that you passed along. Super powerful and a lot of applications here. But this way, if you modify the original key here, you'll see this gets updated in the outside node, so you're not having to track and move multiple power windows in multiple nodes. I love this feature. Now, like I said, serial nodes are going to be your bread and butter for most grading, and you'll be able to apply effects on them like glow or color space transformations and apply things like noise reductions. But those are gonna to be topics for another day since like I said, that gets much more involved. Generally, there is also an agreed upon order for nodes to form your node tree to keep your image clean. And we'll cover all of that in the coming weeks. So that's it for this video. There are other nodes and more advanced things you can do, but for the sake of this video and getting you started, we covered the basics and honestly, this will carry you about 95 to 99% of the time all the way through most of your projects. We'll build on this knowledge in the coming weeks. So like I said, make sure you're subscribed. Like this video if you learned something or at least found it informative. Leave a comment down below and let's chat. And until next time, go out there and create something. La da da da.